Hi guys, I am back. Happy New Year. Yay! 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 <laughs> I asked you guys on Instagram to give me video ideas because even though I have video ideas, you guys, a lot of video ideas I have involve vlogging. And vlogging with a newborn baby is not easy, okay? Nobody should tell you otherwise. It is not easy. So yeah, I was trying to say that I asked you guys on Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, that means you did not give any response. You see, you see this thing that we are saying. Follow us on other platforms so that you get more of us than what we show you on YouTube anyway. Yeah, so I got a lot of, you know, um, video ideas a lot of them are ideas i already had but they involve vlogging but this one is one that yeah it doesn't involve vlogging and it is you know my postpartum updates okay a lot of people had questions for me how you know how my life is basically postpartum how i'm recovering so yeah i'm going to be answering all those questions today in this video so if you'd like to know the answers to your questions and the questions that people ask and if you'd like to know how i'm doing generally then just keep on watching <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to start with the questions that I got on Instagram. Okay, yes, yeah, so let's just start. Alright, so the first question is what are your postpartum body plans? I know it is still early. Oh, we're just gonna jump into body plans. We're just gonna hop into the body questions. <laughs> we're gonna dive into the body questions. Alright, okay. What are my postpartum body plans? My postpartum body plans still remain my body plans for this year, which I had even, you know, irrespective of pregnancy or not. My plan is that I am going to get strong and healthy. That is my goal right now. I'm not looking for flat tummy. Of course, I need to come with, you know, being strong and healthy, but I am not specific about what I want. All I want is I want a body that is strong, you know, and healthy. So physical strength in the sense that um, I'll be, I'll have increased capacity to do more physically, like, you know, do work around the house, take care of my kids, jump around with them, fly around, anything they want to do. If people want to climb house, we'll climb it together, okay? Yeah, physical strength in terms of that. So... In a nutshell, my postpartum plans for my body is to get strong and healthy. So I'm going to, you know, try and eat right, but most especially, I'm going to be working out pretty soon, pretty intensely, pretty soon. How is your fourth trimester? Fourth trimester, for anybody who doesn't know, is the first, um, um, you know, three months after you give birth, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First thing after you give birth or first six weeks or something like that. Anyway, so your, how is your fourth trimester? Are you still bleeding or how long did you bleed? Okay, no, I am not still bleeding. I bled for a little over two weeks. Um, yeah, um, but I'm not still bleeding anymore. I'm totally fine. So how is it How is it going? Well, it's going the way it will go. I don't know. Yeah, this pregnancy, like I said before, I still believe the part of it is because I've not been, you know, keeping up with the way I used to take care of myself. So I feel like that's what is adding to all these, you know, pregnancy aches and pains, you know, postpartum aches and pains. I, that's what I feel. I feel like it's adding to it. And then you know that pregnancy takes a toll on your body. So the more pregnancies you get, the more toll it has on your body. So if you're not upping your game, you know, in terms of your your health and what you eat and you know your fitness and all that yeah you are gonna feel it okay you are gonna feel it so <laughs> so if you are like me or uh, so if you are still young and you're having your kids have them sharp sharp but if you're not you know young again and you're not having your kids you better keep up with your exercise and and your diet keep up because <laughs> the moment you get pregnant you go fill up <laughs> okay yeah so generally i'm doing well how did the children cope with the baby the children are coping very fine with the baby i think i said in my last video cora is you know fantastic she's a very like i keep saying cora is a very sympathetic sister while eva is a protective sister okay so for instance if if sophia is crying that's my baby if she's crying cora will be telling her sorry do you want this i'm here for you okay i'm here okay man i'm like what do you mean i'm here okay what are you going to do for her that you're telling her i'm here okay that's for cora but for eva cora eva will come and be asking me what happened what did you do to her why you stop it you know so yeah that's how they are with the baby they are both amazing big sisters but it's not a surprise to me i think i even said this while i was still pregnant how do you feel being a mom of three adorable girls i feel blessed i feel blessed like it's time i look at my babies i'm like oh, oh my god is it beauty we're looking for is it brains we are looking for is it you know <laughs> We have it complete in this house, so I feel blessed being a you know mom of three, and it actually is actually making me 
want to up my game in terms of, you know, being in touch with my feminine side, you know, taking care of myself, you know, I don't want, uh, I want to be like them, like I want when we go out, all of us are going to be looking, you know, ah, ah, what is happening, you know, yeah, so that part of why I want to be strong and healthy, like I want to be strong, healthy and youthful so that when my kids are older, all of us dress up, you know, they dress up, I dress up and we're going out. People are going to be like, who are those? Who are those? Okay. Yeah. So I feel blessed being a mom of three adorable girls. How did you lose so much weight shortly after birth? A lose of weight. I did not lose any weight though. <laughs> I didn't lose any weight, but one thing you have to know is that while you are pregnant, you're a little bit more swollen because of water retention, you know, more blood in your system, pregnancy, the whole weight of the baby, you know. So, it, it, yeah, you're just going to have a lot of, you're going to be swollen, so you're going to appear, you know, bigger than usual, especially if you do not gain weight in pregnancy. I don't think I gained weight in pregnancy. I think I actually lost. And it has been that way with me with all my pregnancies. I don't really gain weight in pregnancy. I don't even gain weight postpartum. That's to tell you how bad my own is. Do you know when I gain weight? When I win my children. Other people will say that breastfeeding, breastfeeding makes them gain weight. No, not me. I don't get, gain weight being pregnant. I don't gain weight breastfeeding. It's when I'm done with all these processes. I now start gaining weight. Like, <laughs> what kind of rubbish is that? <laughs> you know, so yeah, I don't think I gained weight. I think I even lost weight in pregnancy because um, the first three months I couldn't, I wasn't eating properly. I had, you know, nausea and av um, food aversions. And then... Um, I was very active during my pregnancy, so I don't think I gained, in fact, I lost weight, not like I don't think, I actually lost weight because my weight after, my weight after today is less than what I was before I got pregnant, okay? Yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, so all I was trying to say is that whenever you give birth, in the first few weeks after you give birth, the placenta is out, the baby is out, so that weight is gone. Then the water retention reduces, my feet now is back to normal. The water retention reduces drastically, so you're no longer as swollen as you used to be. Um, yeah, I think my nose is a little bit swollen, but uh, the nose is always big, so that one is not an issue. But, <laughs> but yeah, um, the water retention has reduced and all that and all that, so that's why I appear slimmer, but I didn't lose more weight than than I was when I was pregnant. What are you doing to heal fast? For me right now, what I'm doing to heal fast is getting as much sleep as I can get. Let me not even lie. I, I, felt, I felt like the Holy Spirit just slapped me now as I said that, okay? Let me not even lie. I'm not getting as much, sleep, as, as much sleep as I can get simply because I don't know how to rest. I've told you guys before. See me filming videos now. My baby is sleeping. It's not meant to be sleeping. Sleep while baby sleeps. But the question is, if I sleep while baby sleeps, am I going to film video while baby films videos? <laughs> you know, I have other things to do in my life, you know, so I can't sleep when baby sleeps. Then, I took my postpartum medication religiously. The normal me before, as I'm leaving the hospital, you see all those drugs they pack and give you, I fling it away because first of, first of all, I hate the smell. So most times when I go to the hospital and they're telling me, you know when they're discharging, they're telling you, take this one once a day, take this one two times a day, I'll just be listening. Mm, all right, okay, thank you. Mm. The moment I drive home like this, does be in stress, bam, you know, that was me before. But this time, yeah, because of the circumstances surrounding my, you know, delivery and I lost a bit of blood, I felt like, ah, I better, I better not try myself. And again, I want to be strong and healthy for my kids. It's not like before that I had just one kid or I didn't have any kids at all. Now I have two very active kids plus a baby that I need to take care of. So I was like, I'm not going to slack on taking my medication. So I took every single one of them when I should have, when I should. And yeah, I feel like it's helping a lot. So Ladies, if you are watching me, take your postpartum medication. There's a reason why they give you those drugs. They are not stupid. They, are, they don't feel like wasting drugs. There's a reason why they give you those drugs. Please try. And even while pregnant, keep up with your medication while pregnant as well. Um, me, I slacked on that a bit. That's why I had to buy the gummies. But even the gummies, I'm not taking it very well. But yeah, keep up your medication. All those blood tablets, all those um, folic acid and stuff that they give you, they actually, actually help you, okay? Yeah, so this time, I think what was different with, with my delivery this time is that my doctor gave me calcium and vitamin c which i have never gotten before you know postpartum calcium and vitamin c so those ones i think actually helped me heal fast help with my immunity and all that and all that okay so the next one is did you have cramps after delivery yes i did especially while breastfeeding oh my god it was pregnancy it was um labor all over again while breastfeeding shortly after i gave birth it was labor all over again like the cramps were a lot okay did you have an episiotomy if yes did you heal do you do anything to heal faster um, I had a tear, but not an episiotomy. Episiotomy is when they actually like go and cut you. But me, I had a tear. Um, do you do anything to heal fast? No, I don't do. I didn't do anything to heal fast. 
Um, yeah, I didn't do anything to heal fast. Like I said, the medication they gave me what I was taking. In your culture, do you have to drink a concussion of herbs to cleanse the womb during postpartum? I think they do, but personally, I don't. Um, but this, there is a pesto that they make for women who just give birth that contains uda and some other herbs. Uh, I don't know what uda's English name means, but yeah, uda helps to contract the womb. That is why some people use it as a birth control, you know, method. But I can't imagine drinking uda every time I do the do just because I don't get pregnant. Like I can't imagine doing that. I rather gonna get a proper birth control. But yeah, people use uda for birth control, so it actually helps to contract the womb. Um, yeah, so that's what they take in my culture, but yeah. And what is the worst part of postpartum for you? The worst part of postpartum for me is down there. Yeah, the changes down there, actually when you're sewn and uh, yeah, then the bleeding, everything that goes on down there at postpartum, I don't like it. I think that's the worst part for me. Have you experienced any baby blues? If yes, what do you do to handle it? Yes, I've experienced a bit of baby blues. Um, what I ordered to handle it? Well, Basically, praying, watching movies, doing things that make me happy, um, watching series, breastfeeding my baby, I feel like it helps. You know, talking to my husband, you know, telling him how I feel, exactly how I feel. For anybody who doesn't know, baby blues is actually um, the feeling of sadness that you get after you give birth. A lot of women experience it after you give birth. You know, a lot of women experience this feeling of sadness, feeling of not being adequate you know things around you are not working the way you want them to be people around you are not doing things the way you want them to do it so you start experiencing this you know sad deep sadness which some people mistake for postpartum depression it is not it is not it is not so yeah to answer your question it's just basically doing what makes me happy eating things that make me make me happy yeah me i i, I, I use food to to treat myself so Eating foods that make me happy, doing things that make me happy, talking to my husband, telling him how exactly how I feel, you know, praying about it actually helps a lot. How is breastfeeding going for you? Do you eat or drink anything to increase your milk flow? Breastfeeding is going amazing for me. You guys know that I love breastfeeding. I talk about it here a lot. I'm a breastfeeding enthusiast. I'm not thinking about bottles. I know they wash anything. I know they clean anything. I just carry my, five, my child, feed her. She sleeps off. I put her back on the bed and I keep moving, okay? At night, we both of us sleep and be breastfeeding, uh, sleeping, you know, wake up, bop her, stuff like that, change her and sleep back immediately. So I don't, I sleep well at night. I think that part of why during the day I don't sleep much because I actually do sleep well at night. Um, yeah, so breastfeeding is going very well for me. Do I eat or drink anything? Yes, I drink oats every morning, standard. My breakfast is oats, oats and tea. Yeah, standard. That's my breakfast every morning. I think that's what um, is helping me. Then I drink a lot of water. When I say a lot, I mean a lot. Okay, I have this cup that is 700 ml. So anytime I want to drink water, I drink two of those cups. First of all, okay? Anytime I want to drink water. Now, while I'm breastfeeding, I drink at least one cup while I'm breastfeeding. Then after breastfeeding, I drink another cup again. Then when I'm thirsty, I drink two cups. So I drink a lot of water during the day. Uh, okay, someone is asking, are your hormones still all over the place or they are back to normal i think they are still all over the place yeah i think they are still all over the place there are, there are days that i i feel like i'm losing it <laughs> i don't know if that's what you mean but i think my hormones are still all over the place but from what i heard it takes six weeks for your hormones to get back to normal or so as for pregnancy hormones to leave you it takes six weeks or so then you start dealing with other hormones i don't know that's what i heard um how to deal with tearing episiotomy i'm pregnant and that is my biggest fear um, I think they said how to do deal with tearing is to, as in, okay, how to prevent tearing. I don't know if you can prevent tearing, but maybe doing um, pelvic exercises, doing Kegel, 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 Kegel exercises, doing bouncing on your balls, doing pelvic exercises basically might help you to prevent tearing. Okay. But if you, if you are a first time mom, they are most likely going to give you an episiotomy. They are not going to wait. To see baby will tear you before they now tell you sorry they are going they are most likely going to give you an episiotomy and rather they rather show you you know properly than when you are torn so yeah but your biggest fear my dear i don't think that should be your biggest fear i don't tell you what should be your biggest fear okay go and watch my my uh, um testimony then i should tell you what your biggest fear should that, that should tell you what your biggest fear should be but yeah do not be afraid don't, don't mind me don't be afraid of anything see 
women, after they finish giving you all their horror stories, they still go back for more. There's a reason why, okay? It's because everything passes, okay? Time heals everything. With time, you get better, you feel better, you forget the pain. So don't hold on to anything as your biggest fear. Just have an open mind. Not all women tear. Not all women, you know, bleed so much. Not all women go through so much pain. You don't know what your own story is going to be. So do not start now to be dealing with what you don't have to deal with, which is fear. So yeah, my advice to you is, um, don't be afraid of any tear of anything. It will heal. It will go back to normal. You will still do the do. You will still come back the second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time. You will still be coming back. So don't be afraid. So the next one is, um, I'm curious about the use of nipple cream and its benefits. Yes, yeah, nipple cream actually helps a lot in the beginning when you are just trying to breastfeed and your nipples are always cracked, always painful. Nipple cream actually helps a lot to help, um, help heal your nipples and, you know, help keep them moisturized so that it doesn't crack and really gets painful. But yeah, that's the benefit of nipple cream. After a while, um, you don't have, you don't need to use nipple cream again because your nipples would have been, would have been dealt with. They would have gotten used to the, <laughs> to being dealt with. So you won't need nipple cream anymore. Uh, some people actually use breast milk to lubricate the area. That's mainly after you finish breastfeeding your child, you just take a little bit of breast milk and just rub it all over your nipple area. It helps to heal the place as well. So at that point, you don't need nipple cream again. Did you do seeds, baths, and omugo burning water massage? No, I did not. No, I have never done it. I didn't do it for my first child, and I'm not going to do it for this child. I don't do all that, okay? If you guys are doing it because of flat tummy, you can't press back nine months of expansion. You can't press it back, okay? Did you experience any physical changes like hair loss? Um, I think it's too early for me to start experiencing those physical changes. They actually happen like three or four months down the line, I think. Um, so you don't experience hair loss. I don't know, but for me, I've never experienced hair loss immediately after I gave birth. It takes a while. After all the pregnancy hormones that were sustaining your hair before, keeping your hair lush and full and, you know, thick, after those hormones leave your body, then you're not going to know your real self, <laughs> okay? You're not going to know your real self. So that is when people usually experience postpartum shedding. Um, I didn't experience it funny enough with Cora, but I experienced it a lot with Ava. And I think it's because I breastfed Ava for so long and I wasn't taking, you know, my supplements. So that's what I think. Was your first time breastfeeding your newborn as painful as when you had, I think she means your other babies? Um... I think this one was even more painful. I think it's the most painful I've ever experienced, actually. And that's... Okay, maybe, maybe Cora's one was painful, too, because that was my first time ever breastfeeding. I didn't even know what to expect. The pain hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, I was... I, I, I was I was quaking. I was shaking. Like, what the hell is wrong? Like, the pain was so bad with Cora's one, and I, I was crying because I didn't expect the physical pain. I didn't expect the, you know, tummy pain. I wasn't really ready for it, so... Yeah, this, this pregnancy, it was actually, um, um, this baby's own was actually that bad because she sucked, she, from the beginning, she was sucking with so much energy, you know, so yeah, it, it will still pain you no matter how, you know, how much you breast, except you are breastfeeding another baby until you have your new child, maybe. But this one, I stopped breastfeeding for over two years, so my nipple was back to, to you know, factory setting and then the child came and reset it again for me. Uh -huh. Okay, another person, a lot of people seem to be asking about recommendations for fast healing on a birth tear. To be honest, I really don't know what you can do differently. All I know is just try and sit, sit still. Um, whenever you go and use the bathroom, wash, okay, instead of, you know, wiping, wash. So, um, if you have that uh, stuff, that hand wash, that bonbon -bon washer, okay, <laughs> if you have that thing, then it's best for you. Or you can get a squirt bottle, just a bottle that has a nozzle, use a squirt water there. You know while you pee and after you pee you know always wash don't don't wipe um what else can you do um yeah if you can put um on your pad the pad you are going to be wearing if you can put some witch hazel and you know water and freeze it yeah i've heard you may talk about that in the but i know i tried it you put witch hazel on your pad and freeze it so it'll be cold so whenever you want to change you just put the cold pad with witch hazel it will help to it will help to um, heal the place and help to reduce that burning sensation, you know. So that might be what can help, but I personally, I've not really done anything extra to try and heal myself. Okay, someone is asking, how do you cope with a new baby? The work is crazy, like really, really crazy. Um, you know, I'm not a first-time mom. I'm a veteran at this point, so... <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, forget that I just said now. It doesn't... It, it, yeah, you know what to do, but it's still stressful thinking of a newborn is stressful if you've not had kids and you are planning 
10 children. By the time you have your first child, you will reduce it to 8 children. By the time you have your second child, you will reduce it to 4. You will not be like the rest of everybody that's having 4 kids, 3 kids, 2 kids, okay? Yeah, it is not easy to take care of a newborn. It's actually a lot. It doesn't matter the kind of help you have around you. It is still a lot, okay? Dealing with, you know... Um, not sleeping well at night. Like for me, I sleep well at night right now because we breastfeed. I breastfeed her while she sleeps, but I still have to wake up and change her because if you don't change her, she's going to wake up crying. So anytime I breastfeed her, I still change her. Even while she's sleeping, I change her. Um, yeah, then all these constants, I have to breastfeed, I have to breastfeed, I have to carry her. Sometimes she gets cranky. Sometimes she gets very fussy in the evenings. So all these things will actually add up to, to stress you out majorly. Then when you now have other kids you have to deal with. So it's not easy, but one thing that helps, like I said, is... Um, I've said before, having a good support system, it helps. Um, being organized helps. You have to be very, very organized. You have to be very... Um, you have to train your other children, okay? If you have smaller kids like me, that my kids are still a little bit, you know, young. I have to... I'm trying now to train them. You know, they were not going to school for a long time. So, their, their sleep time is actually a bit off. So, now I'm trying to train them to sleep early so that I will have my life back. Sleep in, have your afternoon naps and sleep early at night so that I'll have my life back and just focus on the newborn. So, it's actually a lot, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying, shall Now, God, they help us. Okay, the next question is, how is your mental health? How are you sleeping? Also... Awesome job on all your YouTube videos. Thank you so much. How is my mental health? Yeah, my mental health has been a, a bit up and down. Yeah, a bit up and down. Sometimes I feel really, really sad and yeah, not angry. When I say angry, not angry, but really, really sad. Like sometimes I feel really, really sad. Like I just feel like things around me are just not going the way I want. Like I'm stressed out. I'm this and that. So sometimes I feel that way. But most of the time I'm good. Like I'm good. It's not, it's not like... It was during chorus that I felt a little bit depressed. I think chorus and I was a little bit depressed, okay? But since then, I've been good. Okay, the next one is, how are you dealing with the tummy and cravings? Tummy, I'm not doing anything about my tummy. Cravings, I don't have any cravings anymore. Yeah, cravings ended immediately. Immediately. So someone is asking, yeah, a lot of people seem to be asking about these baby blues. Do you usually experience postpartum depression or baby blues? Like I said, when I had Cora, I feel like I experienced postpartum depression and... I know that now because I now have to Google symptoms after a while and I realized that I experienced majority of those symptoms after I had Cora. So yes, after Cora, I experienced not so much because, I mean, it can be very bad, it can be mild. I experienced, let's just say, somewhere in between because I had sleepless nights, I had trypophobia. If you guys know what trypophobia is, yeah, I've always had trypophobia, but it's kind of flared up during, let's say flared up. I've always had trypophobia, yeah, but it became worse after I gave birth to Cora. Like, it became worse. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I couldn't... I was just... I was always, like, shaky. I was always, you know, feeling sad. I was always crying uncontrollably. Uncontrollably. I was always feeling cranky. Yeah, like, no, a lot of things were making me feel off that period, yeah. But after that, with Ava, did I experience baby blues? No, I don't think I experienced it with Ava. With this baby, I'm experiencing it a bit, but it's not that bad as well. Someone is asking, how real is postpartum depression? It is very, very real. It is very, very real. Okay, but what I'll say is that not everyone who says they experience postpartum depression actually experienced it. A lot of people mistake baby blues for postpartum depression. Someone is asking, how do you get, or how do I get flat tummy back after delivery? It took you nine months to grow a big belly. It will take you at least nine months to, to, to shrink it back, okay? Your uterus ideally will shrink back to its original size when you get to, um, I think, four weeks or so, or six weeks. Yeah, it will shrink back to its original size, okay? So what else is that extra flabbiness left there? So that extra flabbiness is just flesh, okay? And the only way to go back is by eating healthy. Um, intermittent fasting actually works. It helps with... Hey, what's this word? Intermittent fasting helps with atophagy, atophagy or atophagy or if I find what I'll put it on the screen. So it basically helps to shrink back, you know, your muscles and your flesh. It helps to reduce your flesh. <laughs> I don't know. You guys should go Google it. I beg. Can't Google it a minute. But intermittent fasting helps with it. So if you want to lose weight without having that extra skin, you know, some people when they finish losing weight drastically, they start having very flabby skin, extra skin. Intermittent fasting helps to reduce that. Okay? Okay, someone is asking, how do you feel about having three kids? How do you deal with mom guilt? I'm about to have my second and I'm so scared the dynamic changes, sleep changes in my toddler and behavior changes. Does having family members help? Um, i.e. 
your mom. Husband currently serving in the military. Okay, how do I deal with mom guilt? Because I do experience mom guilt because I'm not paying as much attention to my other kids like I would have if I didn't have another baby. But one thing I keep telling myself is that I have tried for my other kids. Me, I knew I gave them my 100% when, when they were babies. Like, I, in fact, I gave them 150% each, okay, when they were babies. So, and I still tried my best while I was pregnant to take care of them. So, please... This first six weeks or first three weeks or first three months or first one year of me thinking of another new baby is not it's not what is going to make me a bad mom, you know, or whatever. I don't know. So I just try my best to remind myself that I actually took care of them very well. So is this child's turn to be taken care of, okay? So they should they should pack one side. <laughs> But no, yeah, I still deal with mom guilt. So I try to involve my kids when I can. I try to stay with them. I try to play with them. Because sometimes they, they will come and miss me and say, Mommy, what are you doing? You know, they try to play with the baby. You, I just see that they feel, you know, you know, left out somehow. And they try to, you know, be among. So I try to include them in some things. Like when I'm having my, when I'm batting my baby, I try to bring them so that they will see baby. You know, when I'm changing her, I'll tell them, you bring diaper, you bring wipes. Things like that, try it makes them feel more involved and I feel it makes them feel, not feel left out. Um, but I don't think it's something that goes away, the mom guilt. You just have to deal with it and just try your best, okay? They will be fine. Okay, someone is asking, did I experience behavioral changes in Ava? Yes, but it is not, I don't think it's tied to the baby's arrival. I think it's because she's just, she's two years plus. And you know that naughty tools, I thought they call it terrible, to not, well, my child cannot experience terrible tools in Jesus' name, amen. But you know that the, what happens when they are two they start showing themselves. So she's currently showing herself, but it's not around the baby. Like, in fact, any, if anything, around the baby, she's very gentle, she's very calm, she's very, you know, loving and happy with the baby. But every other time, she's just showing herself. So yeah, that's it. I'm recovering well, even though there's some things that are not, you know, in place yet but i'm recovering well i'm good the baby is good she's growing very well she's a chop chop you know i call her chop 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 she's a chop chop she eats a lot um i'm breastfeeding exclusively i'm not even pumping or bottle feeding like i don't have energy for that right now but i'm going to you know get back to that soon but you know she's gaining weight well she's healthy the only thing that we've been battling a bit is rashes yeah the weather has been so so hot yeah so she's battling rashes but they are going now they are all dried up now so it's just meaning for you know the little bumps to go um but aside that she's she's just perfect sleeps well everything does everything like a champ yeah she's perfect i'm good i'm fine thank you guys so much for all your questions thank you guys for checking up on me as usual thank you guys so much for everything for your support for your love you know i appreciate you guys so much yeah and um thank you for watching this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you all in my next video guys Bye. Mm.